a group of tourists in Alaska stumbled upon a massive, hairy object lying on the ground during their exploration. The sight of the 10-meter-long entity sent shivers down their spines, but they were beyond scared straight when they realized what it really was. They knew they had to call 911 as soon as possible. The entire group was absolutely stunned by this discovery, and it seemed so unreal. That thing they had found was most certainly a mammoth, but it didn't look anything like they had thought it would. Had their history books been so wrong about this? Little did they know that what they had uncovered wasn't just a mammoth after all, and it would lead to a whole lot of trouble. Wait, are you sure that we have to call the police? One of the tourists, a man named Caleb, asked. Harriet, however, had already dialed 911. Well, we have to report this to someone, don't we? She replied, to which Caleb agreed, and so did the others in their team. The only question is, what do we tell them? After a short discussion, Harriet finally made the call and explained to the officer that they had found the remains of a mammoth. The officer straight up laughed at her when he heard this, but she didn't give up. I'm serious. It must have melted out of the ice or something. But I'm telling you, I'm looking at a mammoth right now. You have to send someone over. The officer explained that the entire area had been searched and assured her that any mammoth remains had already been found and excavated. But Harriet persisted. Finally, the officer reluctantly agreed to contact a local glacial recovery unit to investigate the matter further. He instructed Harriet and her group to remain where they were until the team arrived. Harriet was relieved that the officer had finally agreed to send someone over, and she passed everything that he had told her on to her teammates. Caleb was taking pictures of this strange mammoth, while some of the others tried finding information about it online. They found all kinds of mammoths, but none looked like the one lying in front of them. They were all really curious about what the glacial recovery unit would tell them. Harriet approached the mammoth to take a closer look at it, and she had so many questions. What kind of mammoth was this? And if, as the officer had told her, the entire area had been excavated already, how did this mammoth end up here today? It did not make any sense. Harriet and her team eventually got tired of waiting, and they sat down, keeping their eyes open for any signs of the unit. Finally, they heard a loud noise, and a truck arrived, coming to a halt a few feet away from them. A man stepped out of the truck, and Harriet approached him, stretching out her hand to greet him. Hello, I'm Arnold, the man introduced himself, and he explained that he was a glacial archaeologist. However, he failed to finish his sentence as Harriet and the group moved away from the mammoth, and he finally laid eyes on it. What? What is that? Arnold exclaimed, and he hurried toward it to get a closer look. He knelt down next to the mammoth and inspected it in silence, occasionally sighing or mumbling something so quietly that the others could not understand what he was saying. Harriet and her group waited in suspense to hear what Arnold would say next. They expected him to be amazed by their find and to inform them that they had made a stunning discovery, but his response was very different. As Arnold stood up again and brushed the snow off his gloves, Harriet walked over to him. Well, what is this thing? she asked, and Arnold's reply shocked her. Miss, I'm afraid I can't tell you. You should never have seen this. Harriet's eyes widened upon hearing this, and Caleb demanded an explanation. However, Arnold only said one more thing. I'm afraid you have to come to the station with me. Arnold pulled out his phone with a sense of urgency that was almost palpable, casting quick glances at Harriet and her friends. The group's tension was as thick as the surrounding Alaskan fog, every word from Arnold's call slicing through the silence. Harriet tried to catch bits of the conversation, her heart racing with each muffled word. Arnold's demeanor told them this was no ordinary find, and his secrecy only fueled their unrest. After ending the call, Arnold's gaze lingered on the group, sharp and calculating. It was clear he wasn't going to let anyone out of his sight. Harriet felt a chill that had nothing to do with the cold. 
The group exchanged nervous glances, their earlier excitement now replaced by a growing dread. Arnold's silence was a clear message. They were in deeper than they thought, and there was no easy way out. Caleb stepped forward, his curiosity getting the better of him. What's so special about this mammoth? He asked. But Arnold's lips were sealed. Each attempt to glean information was met with a stoic silence or a deflection. The more Arnold refused to speak, the more their imaginations ran wild. Was it dangerous? Was it even a mammoth at all? The lack of answers only deepened the mystery. Finally, Arnold pocketed his phone and addressed the group. His tone left no room for argument. Get in the car, now, he commanded. Harriet's mind raced with scenarios, none of them comforting. The seriousness in Arnold's voice was a clear sign that this discovery had catapulted them into uncharted territory. Reluctantly, they complied, their minds swirling with unanswered questions and the fear of the unknown. The drive was tense, with Arnold focused on the road and the group sitting in uneasy silence. The landscape blurred past, a stark reminder of how far they were from anything familiar. Harriet glanced at her friends, their faces a mix of fear and fascination. What awaited them at the station? Would they be in trouble for their discovery? The weight of the situation settled over them like a thick blanket, heavy with uncertainty and the fear of what was to come. Climbing into Arnold's truck, the tourists exchanged glances, a silent agreement passing between them to stick together, no matter what. The mammoth, now a mere dot in the distance, seemed like a surreal memory. Arnold's mention of a cleanup crew sparked whispers among them. What do they need to clean up? Caleb murmured, voicing the unease they all felt. The mammoth's enigma grew, wrapping tighter around their thoughts. As the truck trudged through the snow, Harriet watched the sight disappear behind them. The mention of a cleanup crew lingered in her mind. Why was this necessary? What was so dangerous about their find that it warranted such secrecy? Questions bubbled up, but with Arnold's stern profile leading the way, answers seemed as distant as the fading landscape. The journey's silence felt louder than any words. The ride was anything but comfortable. Each bump and jolt felt like a reminder of their uncertain fate. Silence enveloped the group, a heavy cloak that none dared to lift. Harriet tried to meet Arnold's eyes through the rearview mirror, searching for any hint of what lay ahead. But his gaze was fixed, revealing nothing. The snowy scenery outside mirrored their internal desolation, cold and untouched. The building they pulled up to was as nondescript as they come, gray, almost blending into the sky above. A man, presumably Arnold's colleague, stood waiting, his expression was unreadable as he gestured for them to follow him inside. Harriet felt a knot tighten in her stomach. The building's lack of signage or identification added layers to the mystery. What place was this, hidden away from prying eyes? Inside, they were ushered into a small, stark office, the kind you might see in old detective movies. Wait here, Arnold's colleague instructed closing the door behind him. The room felt like a holding cell, their questions and fears the only company. Caleb paced while Harriet sat, tapping her foot nervously. The unknown loomed over them, a cloud of uncertainty and anticipation. What were they waiting for? From their makeshift prison, the tourists could hear Arnold and his colleague arguing in hushed, urgent tones. The muffled words were indecipherable, but the tension in their voices was clear as day. Harriet and her friends exchanged worried looks, the air thick with unease. What were they disagreeing about? The atmosphere was charged, a storm brewing on the horizon, and they were in the eye of it. Curiosity got the better of Harriet. She ex, pressing her ear against the cold wood, catching snippets of a conversation that sent shivers down her spine. Indefinite stay, one voice said, a phrase that echoed ominously in the silent room. Harriet's heart raced. The implications were chilling. 
They weren't guests here. They were prisoners. The realization hit her like a ton of bricks. Harriet hurried back to her chair, her movements quick but silent. The group's eyes met in a shared moment of fear. Their adventure had turned into a nightmare, their excitement replaced by the cold grip of dread. What did indefinite stay mean for them? Were they ever going to leave? Questions swirled in their minds, but fear anchored them in place. The unknown had never felt more terrifying. The sound of approaching footsteps snapped Harriet back to reality. She straightened up, trying to mask her panic. The door swung open, and Arnold entered with his colleague. Their faces were grave, their eyes avoiding the tourists. The silence that followed was deafening, a prelude to a verdict they were not ready to hear. The air was thick with anticipation and dread, each heartbeat echoing in the tense silence. Arnold and his colleagues stood before them, a united front of grim resolve. No words were spoken, but their expressions spoke volumes. Clearly, they were the bearers of bad news, the kind that could alter the course of their lives. The tourists waited, breaths held, for the verdict to be delivered. The room felt smaller, the walls closing in as they braced for what would come. Arnold's gaze locked onto Harriet, sharp and probing. Walk me through it, he said, a command more than a request. Harriet recounted their day, her voice steady but her hands betraying her nerves as they twisted together. Arnold's face remained impassive, absorbing every word, every detail, as if trying to read between the lines of her story. Your camera, please. Arnold's hand was outstretched, waiting. With a hesitant breath, Harriet passed it over. He flicked through the photos with a meticulousness that felt invasive, each image scrutinized, dissected under his unwavering focus. Harriet watched, a knot tightening in her stomach, wondering what unseen line they might have crossed with their innocent snapshots. The room felt smaller, the air thicker, as Harriet answered question after question. Arnold's inquiries circled around, painting their adventure in strokes of suspicion and concern. Harriet's compliance was her anchor, a silent plea for understanding amidst the sea of uncertainty. Each answer was given in hope, a beacon lit against the shadow of their predicament. The door shut with a definitive click, sealing Harriet in a room that felt both too large and too empty. She sank into a chair, the coolness of the metal barely registering. Harriet's eyes drifted to the blank walls, her mind replaying Arnold's probing questions, each one echoing in the hollow silence. The weight of her own responses hung in the air, mingling with the what-ifs and maybes that danced just out of reach. Across the hall, Caleb stood, a solitary figure under Arnold's scrutinizing gaze as the photos he'd taken were displayed one by one on the screen. Each image seemed to pull tighter the strings of tension in the room. Arnold's eyes darted from the screen to Caleb, searching for discrepancies in his recounting. Caleb's replies came carefully, measured, almost as if he was a zookeeper speaking to a distressed animal. Arnold's fingers paused over a photo, his brow furrowing before he pressed the delete button. Caleb watched, a silent protest in his eyes, as each image vanished. Arnold's actions spoke volumes, his usually stoic face betraying a flicker of distress. This mammoth wasn't just a find, it was a secret, one that Arnold seemed determined to keep under wraps, no matter the cost. Caleb's heart raced, but not with defeat. A smirk played on his lips, hidden from Arnold. The photos were gone from his camera, but not from existence. Earlier, on a hunch, he had uploaded them to a cloud service, a digital lifeline now proving its worth. Relief washed over him, mixed with a growing seed of distrust towards Arnold. What was so damning about these photos? Caleb prodded, his questions sharp, aiming for the chinks in Arnold's armor. But Arnold deflected every inquiry with a practiced ease, a wall of silence against Caleb's siege. The more Arnold evaded, the deeper Caleb's suspicions burrowed. There was a story here, hidden behind Arnold's careful neutrality, 
and Caleb was determined to unearth it, piece by piece. Back in their temporary cell, Caleb found Harriet, her anxious gaze meeting his. Words tumbled out, a flood of doubts and discoveries. Harriet listened, her own unease mirrored in Caleb's recount. Their trust in Arnold, already fragile, splintered further with each shared word. They were in this together, united by their mistrust and the looming shadow of their accidental discovery. Curiosity led Caleb to the door, a hopeful twist of the handle turning to dismay. It was locked from the outside. The realization hit like a physical blow, their confinement no longer just a precaution, but a prison. Caleb faced Harriet, his expression grim. This was no mere detention for their safety. It was something darker, a captivity with implications they were only beginning to grasp. The room felt smaller each second, the lack of windows turning every breath heavier, every moment stretched thin with tension. Caleb and Harriet's eyes met, a silent acknowledgement of their shared claustrophobia. The air was thick, laden with desperation, as they paced the confines of their prison, the absence of escape routes allowed echo in the silence. Their hands scoured every inch, fingers tracing the cold, unyielding surfaces for any sliver of hope, a hidden door, a forgotten tool, anything. But the room gave up no secrets, offered no solace. Every corner turned, every possible hiding spot checked, only solidified their helplessness. They were alone, with nothing but their wits and an increasing sense of urgency. Under the dim light, Caleb and Harriet huddled together, voices low. When they come for us, that's our chance, Caleb murmured, his eyes alight with a daring spark. Harriet nodded, her own resolve hardening. They would wait for the door to open, for the briefest lapse in their captor's vigilance. That moment would be their lifeline, their fleeting shot at freedom. As the lock clicked open, Caleb's muscles tensed, ready. The door swung inward, and he sprung into action, slipping through the gap with a dancer's grace. A quick shove against the door, and his foot wedged it open, a sliver of hope held ajar. He cast a last look at Harriet, a silent promise, before melting into the shadows of the corridor. Left behind, Harriet turned to the figure that entered, a newcomer, eyes wide with confusion. Quickly she spilled the essence of their plight, Caleb's daring move distilled into urgent whispers. He's looking for a way out, for all of us, she explained, the weight of their situation pressing down. The newcomer's eyes flickered with understanding, a new ally forged in the crucible of their circumstances. Caleb's footsteps were silent as he slipped into another room, a space cluttered with screens and papers. His eyes flickered over the equipment, searching for anything. A clue, a map, a hint of the facility's purpose. He found a laptop, its screen a gateway to the answers they needed. With a few deft clicks, Caleb breached its defenses, diving into the digital depths for truths hidden in shadow. The laptop's files spilled open under Caleb's skilled navigation, revealing layers of confidential memos and reports. His heart raced as each document hinted at activities far beyond ordinary, a glimpse into the facility's heart that beat with secrets dark and deep. Each click peeled back layers, revealing a reality that twisted in his gut, a picture forming that painted their hosts not as protectors, but as jailers of something far more sinister. Digging deeper, Caleb's fingers flew across the keyboard, uncovering files that sketched the facility's true intentions in stark, unyielding strokes. The screen flickered with evidence of projects wrapped in euphemisms, the reality behind them chilling. Caleb's pulse thundered in his ears as the pieces fell into place, the enormity of their situation dawning on him. They were caught in a web far more dangerous than they had imagined. The weight of discovery pressed down on Caleb, each file, each revelation, like a stone added to his burden. The facility, their captor, was no benign researcher but a harbinger of risks untold. They were not merely accidental witnesses, but pawns on a chessboard they barely understood. 
The thought struck Caleb like a blow, realization sinking in with a cold, hard finality. Hands shaking, Caleb captured screenshots, documenting the evidence of their dire predicament. Time was a luxury they didn't have, each moment precious as he pieced together the puzzle of their imprisonment. With a deep, steadying breath, Caleb prepared to return to his friends, armed with the urgent truth. Escape was no longer just an option. It was a necessity, their only shot at evading the shadows they had stumbled into. Caleb's return was a blur of motion and whispered urgency. We have to leave now, he breathed out, his eyes wild with the gravity of their situation. His friends read the seriousness in his gaze, understanding without words the peril they faced. The plan was simple but desperate. Flee before their captors realized they were missing. Trusting Caleb, they moved, a silent pact between them to face whatever lay ahead together. Under the cloak of dimming light, they navigated the complex's maze-like corridors, hearts pounding in unison. Arnold's truck, parked and unsuspecting, became their unlikely escape vehicle. With Harriet behind the wheel, they slipped away, the engine's quiet purr a stark contrast to the thundering of their pulses. They left the facility behind, a shadowy monolith against the twilight, harboring secrets they were now privy to. The crack of gunfire shattered the tense silence, Arnold appearing as if conjured by their fears. The sight of him, weapon in hand, firing with a grim determination, was a visceral reminder of what they knew, what they fled. Bullets whizzed past, close enough to echo Death's whisper. The realization that their knowledge made them targets hung heavy in the air, a tangible threat to their desperate bid for freedom. Adrenaline became their fuel, pushing them beyond fear, beyond reason. Harriet maneuvered the truck with a newfound ferocity, dodging obstacles and gunfire. The landscape blurred past, a mere backdrop to their frantic escape. Arnold's figure dwindled, but his presence lingered, a menacing promise. Every turn, every acceleration was a defiance, a declaration of their will to survive against the odds stacked so perilously against them. The roar of an engine tore through the night, Arnold's relentless pursuit a clear and present danger. His truck, a menacing specter in the rearview mirror, was a constant reminder of the stakes. They wove through the Alaskan wilderness, the chase a high-stakes dance with fate. With each twist and turn, their resolve hardened. They would not be caught, would not yield to the shadows chasing them down. The night air was pierced by the sharp crack of gunfire, a terrifying symphony that played to the rhythm of their accelerated heartbeat. Each shot, aimed with deadly intent, threatened to end their desperate bid for freedom. The bullets, singing past, thudded into the vehicle's bodywork, a stark reminder that their lives hung by a thread, every moment on the road a gamble against fate. With Caleb's hands steady at the wheel, they darted and weaved through the labyrinthine forest paths, a dance of shadows and moonlight. The adrenaline surged, fueling Caleb's resolve as he pushed their limits, outmaneuvering their pursuer with each heart-stopping turn. Finally, the roar of Arnold's engine faded, swallowed by the dense Alaskan wilderness, granting them a precious, fleeting moment to catch their breath and confront the reality of their escape. Hidden by the cloak of night, Caleb turned to his friends, his face illuminated by the dim glow of the dashboard. The urgency in his voice cut through the silence. What we found, it's bigger than us, he began his words heavy with the burden of truth. He spoke of the facility's chilling projects, of secrets so dark they threatened to swallow them whole. Caleb paused, gathering the courage to reveal the heart of the mystery. The mammoth, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. It was no relic of the past. It was an experiment, a creation of genetic manipulation gone too far. The revelation hung between them, a testament to the lengths some would go for the sake of science, disregarding the bounds of ethics and morality. With a few clicks, Caleb brought the evidence to light, 
the screen casting eerie shadows on their faces. Documents, emails, photos, all painting a picture of ambition unchecked by conscience. This is what they didn't want the world to see, he said, scrolling through files that detailed experiments too horrific to imagine. The truth was laid bare, a grim testament to their discovery's profound significance, thrusting them into a story much larger than they had ever anticipated. After Caleb finished, nobody spoke for a long moment. They just looked at each other, feeling scared and really upset. It was like a bad movie became real, and they were the main characters. The silence was heavy, filled with their quick, quiet breaths. They knew they couldn't just forget what they'd seen and heard. It was like an unspoken promise passed between them to do something about it. As the sun peeked out, they all felt a change. With the screenshots and files they had, it was like they were carrying a big secret, one that could change everything. They hit the road again, but this time it felt different. They weren't just running away. They were on a mission to tell the world about the bad stuff happening back at that facility. Their road trip had started as something fun, but now it had turned into something way bigger. They all realized they had stumbled onto something huge, something that could get them in a lot of trouble, but also something important. It was like they had been chosen to fix a big wrong. This moment changed everything. It wasn't just about them anymore. Coming back to the real world felt weird. They went straight to the cops and showed them everything, all the proof they had. At first, the cops were like, are you for real? But the evidence was too strong to ignore. It was scary, but also kind of exciting to think they were actually making a difference. Suddenly, they were everywhere, on TV, online, and in the papers. Everyone was talking about them, calling them heroes for standing up to the scary stuff the facility was doing. It was wild. They went from being normal friends on a trip to being in the middle of a huge story. Everyone was listening to what they had to say about right and wrong in science. News broke out fast. Arnold and his team were arrested. Watching the news, the group saw the facility they'd escaped from surrounded by police. They're shutting it down, Caleb whispered, a hint of disbelief in his voice. It was real. Their actions had led to this moment, bringing down a place that was doing so much wrong. It felt like a weight lifted, yet the gravity of their adventure sank in deeper. As the dust settled, the group found themselves hailed as heroes. It was weird for them. Just a week ago, they were planning road trip playlists, and now they were getting thanked for exposing a huge scandal. Sitting together, watching their story unfold on social media and TV, they shared a look of amazement. They'd set out for an adventure, but they ended up changing the course of a story much bigger than themselves. Their story started conversations everywhere about how far is too far in the name of science. Schools, online forums, even dinner tables buzzed with discussions about what they had uncovered. Did you ever think we'd impact the world like this? Harriet asked the group one evening. They all shook their heads, marveling at how their scary experience shed light on the need for ethical boundaries and scientific exploration. Later, sitting around a campfire, the group reflected on everything that had happened. I'm proud of us, Caleb said, staring into the flames. But man, that was terrifying. They all agreed. They were proud, sure, but the memories of their ordeal lingered, a mix of trauma and triumph. They knew this experience had changed them, marking a before and after in their lives they could never cross back. In the end, their story was more than just a thrilling escape. It was a lesson in the power of standing up for what's right. Despite the fear, the danger, and the uncertainty, they'd made a difference, a fact that gave them a newfound sense of purpose. Imagine if we hadn't said anything, Harriet mused. But they had, and in doing so, they reminded the world of the unpredictable nature of discovery and the undeniable impact of courage. Did you like this touching and surprising story? If so, 
we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion. If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel or check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your cooperation.